beginning your custom ruler. First thing you're going to do is open Adobe Illustrator. When you get there, it's going to look like this. You're going to click New File. And on the right side, you're going to make sure that you change this to 12 inches of width and 1 inch of height. You're going to make sure it's RGB. Change the raster effects to high and hit Create. When you do, it's going to create an artboard that is 12 inches wide and 1 inch tall. And this is where you're going to create your custom ruler. The first thing I want you to do is go up to Edit, Preferences, and go to, sorry about that, Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grids. And you're going to make sure that there's a grid every 1 inch and you change the subdivision to 16 because that will make your lines a sixteenth of an inch apart, which is the smallest lines we need on our ruler. And then click OK. Now we're going to go up to View, and we are going to go to Rulers and click Show Rulers. So around the outside of our screen, we can see 0 inches all the way up to beyond 12 inches, both vertically and horizontally. We're going to go up to View again. We're going to be doing this a couple times. And we are going to make sure that Snap to Grid is turned on. You know it's turned on when there's a check mark next to it. So right now my Snap to Grid is not on. I'm going to click on it and it's going to be on because I'm going to go up to View again. And now I can see there's a check mark there. I'm going to uncheck Snap to Point and I'm going to uncheck Snap to Glyph. I just want Snap to Grid on. Now I can begin uh, making my ruler. Uh, oh, wait, the last thing I can't see, I need to turn uh, Show Grid on as well. There, now I can see my little squares. The other thing I want you to know is that you're going to use the Control Plus and the Control Minus button to zoom in and out. I'm too far away to be effective when I design my ruler, so I'm going to zoom in, which also means I'm probably going to go to the bottom and need to use my scroll bar uh, at least left and right so I can see the end of my ruler. All right, the tool I want to use, I'm going to go on the left side, and where the rectangle is, I'm going to click and hold down on it, and another menu is going to pop up, and I'm going to switch to Line Segment tool. All right, that allows me to draw a line segment or a section of a line. The other thing that I'm going to be doing that you can't see on the screen is I'm going to be holding down the Shift key a lot. If I hold down the Shift key, it forces me to draw a straight line. It doesn't allow me to draw crooked lines. Okay, so if I draw my zero line, I'm going to hold down the shift key and it forces me to draw only a straight line. See, I if I come over here, I can't draw a bunch of funky lines. It allows me to draw a straight line or a diagonal line and that's it. And that makes my life much easier. Okay, so I drew a line. Now my line's not very thick. Uh, a couple things I want to show you. Uh, I'm going to use the keyboard arrows right and left. And I'm going to hit the right arrow key. Notice that my line moves, but it doesn't just move anywhere. It moves only on the lines I want it to be. Those are my grid lines. That's why we turned on Snap to Grid. So now I'm not going to use my mouse to drag my line around. I'm going to click it where I want it. And then I'm going to come over here. And what's really important is every time I draw something on the screen, I need to make sure that the stroke is turned on to black. Okay, That needs to be black. Fill doesn't matter. Stroke does. And I can change my line thickness right here. Okay? I'm going to make my full inch lines three points wide. They're nice and thick. I can see them easy. And I'm making my lines go all the way across the ruler. Okay? Another thing I want to do is make more lines. Now, I could go manually draw all these lines. But I could use Control-C for copy and Control-V for paste. And it makes another line for me. And I'm not going to touch my mouse. I'm going to use my keyboard arrows left and right to line up my lines. So now I can make multiple lines very quickly. By the way, if I want to make it even faster, I can go up here and click on the arrow so I can select tools. And I'm, that line is already selected. I'm going to hold the shift key again and select another line. Both of them are selected. Now there's two ways I can do this. I can select with the shift key or I can click and drag a box over both of them and they're Select it. Now if I go Control C and Control V, it copies both of them. So I can copy multiple lines at a time and add them to my ruler. Okay, Something to think about, especially when you start getting your smaller lines in there. Okay? Now your job is to continue on and make the lines necessary to measure to sixteenths of an inch, however you want to do that. 
The other tool I want you to see really quickly is the type tool. Okay, you might want to go on here and put labels. So click on T and it'll allow you to type. Now when you click, it's going to put some uh, Greek letter or Latin letters, lorem ipsum on it. Don't worry about what that is. Uh, as soon as you type, um, let's say one fourth, it's going to replace it. Now if I highlight that, okay, there's a couple places I can do this, but I can change the font size to smaller and bigger. I can change the font type. Okay, I can also do it over here on the right side in the properties menu. But what I want you to notice right away is the stroke did not automatically fill the black. So if I were to engrave this ruler, one fourth wouldn't show up. Even though I see it on my screen, the only thing an engraver will fill is what is stroke black. So now I've got my text on the screen and the laser engraver will actually engrave it. Okay. So now your job is to continue on putting on lines and words or text or labels on your ruler so you understand best how to use it. It is your ruler and uh, that's why we're doing this. So have fun and uh, we'll see what happens.